views that the 1% media won't publish. Welcome to the Occupied Sun for the Occupy News Network. I'm Ann Narkey. These are just some of the headlines which were underreported, censored, or distorted by the 1% media this week. On Monday, 5,000 doctors shut down Whitehall in a protest against UK Gov PLC's NHS cuts. Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt is trying to impose new contracts that would slash junior doctors' pay by up to 40%. The demonstrators crossed Parliament Square, took the road and marched on Downing Street chanting no ifs, no buts, no junior doctor cuts. Liverpudlian love activist Chelsea B was released last week on her appeal. Four of the Love Bank five remain incarcerated. The five had occupied Liverpool's Old Bank of England from April but were evicted on May 12th. The love activists were using the building as a support centre, incorporating a place to sleep, an advice centre and a street kitchen for Liverpool's vulnerable people. In a statement from their prison cells issued via streetskitchen.co.uk, love activists John Hall and John Rice said, We are political prisoners which we find ironic when we are not interested in politics at all. Everything we do, we do as humans who want to help other humans. We would also like to say on the record that we are peaceful men and anybody who says any different, in particular the media, are lying. We thank you with all our hearts for making the time in here easy to face through your support, solidarity and love. Together we are making a difference. Solidarity, love and peace, John Hall and John Rice. You can read their full statement at streetskitchen.co.uk. Anonymous has brought down the websites of the Saudi Ministry of Justice and the Islamic Development Bank in protest at plans to behead and crucify 21-year-old pro-democracy protester Ali Mohammed Bakir al-Namir. Amnesty International have described the trial which convicted Namir as deeply flawed amid allegations that his confession was tortured out of him. Op Namir was launched on the 22nd to encourage UK Gov PLC to intervene. Unsurprisingly, they didn't, so DDoS attacks commenced Sunday with the following message issued by Anonymous. We cannot and will not allow this to happen. The Ministry of Justice was taken offline a few days ago and we will continue to do this to other government websites. You can find the target list on Pastebin. OPNIMR has now reached stage 2. It was not a good idea to anger a Saudi Arabian government. We hope you listen to us this time and release the young man. You will be treated as a virus and we are the cure. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. WikiLeaks released documents in June which revealed UK Gov PLC greased the wheels for Saudi Arabia to have a seat on the UN Human Rights Council. WikiLeaks has half a million Saudi cables. So far, just 61,304 of these have been published. Saudi is responsible for ongoing war atrocities in Yemen and has reportedly beheaded twice as many people as ISIS in the last year. The Union of Concerned Scientists have released a set of seven deception dossiers, collections of internal documents that have either been leaked to the public, come to light through lawsuits, or been disclosed through freedom of information requests. Each collection provides an inside look at the 1%'s coordinated campaign of deception and how for nearly three decades, many of the world's largest fossil fuel companies, including BP, Shell, Peabody Energy and other members of the industry, have knowingly worked to deceive the public about the realities and risks of climate change. You can download the full report from their website ucusa.org. Jeremy Corbyn conceded his first major compromise this week at the Labour Party conference as unions vetoed a bid to have a debate on the renewal of the apocalyptic trident weapons of mass Armageddon system. We go now to Tarpaulin Simon for more on this story. Simon. The vote on whether to retain Britain's independent nuclear deterrent will be taken in 2016 and Corbyn has consistently argued the merits of unilateral disarmament for a safer world. However, 
The trade union said they would block any attempt to disarm, quoting the jobs that would be lost if Trident was not renewed. The 100 billion, three billion pounds per year for the next 30 years that will be spent on renewing Trident over its lifetime could be spent on 120,000 nurses and 30 new hospitals. Trident is different to most other public services that we're hoping to never ever use it. Even warmonger extraordinaire Tony Blair said in his autobiography, The expense is huge and the utility in a post-Cold War world is less in terms of deterrence and non-existent in terms of military use. Furthermore, it is frankly inconceivable we would use our nuclear deterrent without the United States using theirs. In 2010, the government said, no state currently has both the intent and the capability to pose a direct nuclear threat to the United Kingdom or its vital interests. So what use are Trident nuclear missiles? Trade unions say that their first priority is to protect jobs, although the skills required to build arms are very similar to those needed in the crucial fight against climate change. The military says that decommissioning would be too expensive and it makes more sense to keep Trident. And politicians say they're needed to maintain Britain's status in the world stage and to negotiate with other countries. The Occupied Sun wonders if there'll be more prestige in leading the world to a safer state by being the first nation with a permanent seat on the UN Security Council to voluntarily scrap its nuclear deterrent. Thanks, Simon. We'll be back soon with more reports covering news the 1% media have ignored or spun.